Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are now watching the telecast coming to you from Prayer Temple of Love Cathedral, where I, your humble servant, St. Richard A. Smith, is a pastor and organizer. We invite you to be a part of our services. Call a friend, call a neighbor, call a relative, and call somebody and tell them to stay tuned to this telecast right here on this station. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endure to all generations. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. If you're excited about what God is doing in your life, I dare you to put those sanctified hands together in this place and bless the name of the Lord with me. I rise on this morning giving honor to Christ Jesus who is the head of my life. Amen to the shepherd of this house, senior pastor, St. Richard A. Smith. Amen, first lady in her absence. Amen to my beautiful wife, my beautiful children, all the people of God, the ministerial staff, and to the parishioners who have come out today. I greet you with love, peace, and prosperity on today. Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. Come on, help me say, Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. Y'all sound pretty good. Sometimes when I'm feeling low, nowhere to go, Jesus comes around and he Come on, sing it, church. Jesus is real. Let's get to the good part. Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. Y'all sound so good. Oh, yes, he is. Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. Y'all follow me right here. Help me say it. Say real, 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 oh yes he's real, I know he is, I know he is, I know he is, oh yes he's real, I said how many know he's real, yeah, y'all don't believe it, how many know he's real, yeah. myself hallelujah I don't know about you but I came to lift up the name of Jesus on today hallelujah the Lord is so real thank you choir y'all sound so good amen hey honey <laughs> Zaquan you gotta give me some more cardio cause I'm breathing hard Amen. I can catch my breath. Amen. Then we're going to preach a little bit. And we're going to let y'all enjoy y'all families on this day that has been set aside to honor the mothers. Amen. First, I want to say happy Mother's Day to every mother. 
under the sound of my voice. May the Lord God bless you real good. Amen. Amen. You know, as I look out amongst the crowd, I realize that this is just another sign. I remember growing up, they used to call people CME Christians because they would come to church on Christmas, Easter, and Mother's Day. CME, Christmas, Mother's Day, Easter. If they didn't come to church no other Sunday, Mother's Day was going to be here on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. But when I look out, I see what is referred to as the remnant. Because the same Bible that you read also tells me that the time will come when men won't endure sound doctrine. They become lovers of them own selves. They put everything in front of Christ. But I tell you one thing, I'm reminded of what Paul also said. I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. Hallelujah. We're going to preach a little bit this morning. I'm not going to be before you long. I just want to just bring out a few little points that hopefully will bless you all. Amen. We want to look at John, the fourth book in the New Testament. John, the gospel according to John. Amen. And we want to go to the second verse there. John 2. Amen. And when you have it, stand to your feet. If you're physically able and you don't have a Bible, shame on you, but stand to your feet anyway and draw your attention to the monitor. I believe they'll be getting that scripture up for us momentarily. John 2 and 1. Amen. John 2 and 1. Amen. We're going to read a few verses. Let me step over here so I can see good. Amen. Amen. On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana, Galilee. Jesus' mother was there and keep rolling for me. We're going to go all the way down. Just keep rolling with me. Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding as well. Verse 3 says, when the, when the wine ran out, Jesus' mother told him, they don't have any wine. Uh, Jesus replied, said, what has this concern of yours to do with me, woman? Jesus asked, my hour has not come, has not yet come. Uh -huh, uh, Mary, do whatever he tells you. His mother told the servants. Now six stone water jars had been set there for Jewish purification, each containing 20 to 30 gallons each. Filled the jars with water, Jesus told them, so they filled them to the brim. Then he said unto them, now draw some out and take it to the chief servant, and they did. Uh-huh, what happened next? Uh, when the chief servant tasted the water after it had become wine, he did not know where it came from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, he called the bridegroom and told them, everybody sets out the fine wine first. Then after the people have gotten drunk freely, uh, and the inferior, uh, but you have kept the fine wine until now. Jesus performed this first sign in Canaan of Galilee. He displayed his glory, and his disciples beloved him, believed him. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat. Amen. Y'all ain't had a King James version back there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But we gonna get the point across anyway. For a topic, I just want to think for a minute. Mama, do I have to? Mama, do I have to? Jesus, at this wedding, 
Now, first what we have to understand, people of God, is that in the life that we live, the world that we live in, a first impression is always a lasting impression. They say that if you don't make the proper first impression, there's a possibility that the window opportunity can close up and you may not get a chance to make a second impression. Some of y'all are wondering, what is he talking about? Let me explain it to you. For the benefit of those of you who don't read your Bible regularly, this here miracle recorded by John, and John alone, I might point out, being that John was the only non-synoptic gospel, and Matthew, Mark, and Luke recorded a lot of the same events, but John was kind of a different kind of cat because he was focusing on wonders and signs in the second coming of Christ. And he wrote here the first miracle that Jesus ever performed. Stop me if I'm wrong. I don't want to tell you nothing that ain't right. This was the very first miracle that Jesus ever performed. Now, how can our Lord and our Savior Christ Jesus, the one who could have started off his ministry by raising Lazarus from the dead, or could have started off his ministry by walking on water, or could have started off his ministry by feeding the multitude with a couple fish and a couple loaves of bread. Why does he start here turning water into wine? It's simple. Because Mary was going to crack his head if he hadn't been no, out. <laughs> He was following the instructions of his mother. He was being obedient to his mother. We give children too many options now. I remember when I was a kid, I didn't have a choice but to do what my mama told me to do. And I bet not open my mouth to say nothing otherwise. I don't care if I didn't want to play the piano. If she said you playing the piano, you playing the piano. I didn't care if I didn't want to dance at ballet. If she said you going to ballet, then I better go on to ballet. But whatever I did, I better make sure that I was obedient to my mother. That's all what Jesus was doing. He tried to buck against her a little bit because when she came, she said, they done ran out of wine. He like, what has this concern to do with me, woman? My hour ain't came yet. This ain't got nothing to do with me. And what we have to understand is that Cana, if you read your word, Cana was only mentioned in the Bible three times, this being one of them. It was not a place of prestige. They didn't have synagogues. They didn't have a Sanhedrin council there. It was just a little low-key city on the outskirts of Galilee. They didn't mention who wedding it was. But if you read your Bible, you understand that in John 1, Jesus had been baptized. He had rounded up his crew. He had got his disciples together, and they was moving about. Then you get to chapter 2, they had this wedding. It said Jesus, his mama, and the disciples, they all there. And uh, what you need to understand about weddings in biblical times, they weren't like weddings nowadays. Weddings in biblical times lasted up to a week long. They was a, a social gathering. The governors, the, anybody who was somebody was at the wedding. And it was a public embarrassment evangelist for you to run out of Meat or wine at the wedding. That looked like you po. The bride, the bride family couldn't afford to supply us with enough meat and wine to get us through the week. They ran out. Y'all know what happened when the wine ran out. The wine ran out. The good times stopped rolling. Long as it's wine, they, they was partying. They was turning up. They was getting lit having a good time then the wine ran out 
So Mary is just like some of the mothers nowadays. Because when she went to tell Jesus to turn the water into the wine, he ignored her. What is this? What is, this ain't got nothing to do with me. And she didn't even pay him no attention. She just went right over to the service and said, y'all do what he tell y'all to do. Because he going to do what I'm telling him to do, and y'all going to do what I'm telling y'all to do. It take a village to raise a kid. Y'all remember that? When you better not disobe be disobedient toward nobody's mama. Yeah. Uh, so they got, they got, the, they got the bottles, the, the, the stone pots, and they, was, they all had 20 to 30 gallons. It was six of them. So Jesus working with a lot of water, Deacon Mike. He got about 120 gallons of water. My God. That's a lot of wine. Amen. But the thing I like the most, I'm not going to be before you long. The thing I like the most is that when he did, he, he did this miracle, but he knew that his hour was not yet to be revealed as the Messiah. But his mama knew that it was something about her son. The angels had already proclaimed it to her. They had already told her who Jesus was. Y'all read y'all Bible, y'all know Jesus. They talked about him up until he was 12 years old. How he was a little kid and running around the elders and stuff. Then he just disappeared off the scene. You don't hear Jesus is no teenager. Then he just popped back up. He's 30 years old. Some of y'all got some 30-year-old kids that ain't done nothing yet. Some of y'all got some 30-year-old people living in your basement that still have not reached their full potential. But as a mother, you keep on trusting in your kid that one day they going to do. They going to fulfill their purpose. They going to walk in their calling. Jesus, 30 years old, ain't did nothing. 30. But she knew. She knew that he had purpose. And she knew that he was able to solve the problem. Does anybody know that Jesus is able to solve the problems in their lives? He's a problem solver. My wife tells you he's a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That's who he is. He turned that water into wine. Some of y'all sanctified folk wish he would have turned the wine into water. And then some of y'all happy he turned the water into wine. Because that can justify if you decide to become the unofficial alcohol commissioner of Wayne County. But Jesus condoned it. <laughs> so why not? But what we need to understand, and we need to understand it very clearly, is that a lot of times in our life, the wine will run out. The wine will run out in your relationships. The wine will run out in your finances. The wine will run out in your family. Sometime, if you stick around long enough, the wine will run out. But we serve a God who is able if he's able to take a little rock in a slingshot and tame a giant named Goliath, if he's able to walk on water, if he's able to raise people from the dead, what makes you think he can't make your husband and your wife act right or make your children behave and become submissive to the will of God? God is able to do anything but fail. He had to show his disciples Show them. He wasn't concerned about the public. He wanted to show them who he was at this point in time. It must have made him mad that he had to do it. Because a little bit further on in chapter 2, he went on down to the temple and started tearing stuff up. He mad. She done made me turn this water into wine. Y'all down here acting a fool up in church. Selling stuff. <laughs> I, 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 this is what the Bible say, y'all. I'm just, I'm just dictating it to you. Read it. Read it. I ain't lying. You got to take the things that you don't necessarily want and put them 
in the pot and it'll transform once Jesus put his hand on it. They didn't want the water, they wanted the wine. But the water didn't become the wine until Jesus put his hands on it. Let me pause right there. Parenthetically, church, do you know that every bottle of wine has at least 60% of water in it? Water is a key element in making wine. So if water is in wine, then I might just think for a minute, maybe it's wine and water. See, y'all, y'all don't know when to shout. That made me happy right there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If it's water and wine, then that also means that it got to be wine and water. So just because it don't taste the way you want it to taste right now, Sister Mary, because it don't look the way you want it to look right, because it don't smell the way, because it's still water and it ain't quite wine yet, I dare you to put it in the hands of Jesus and allow him to turn your water into some wine. You're going to need it. Praying mother, trusting mother, she knew what her son could do. You got to trust in your kids. You have to encourage them. You have to push them to their full capability. Because these kids nowadays, they'll give up on you or they'll try to. But you got to be that mother to say, "Uh uh-uh, get back, get back at it. Nope, uh uh-uh, get back at it. You can't just sit back and say, oh, well, he ain't going to be nobody. He ain't going to be nothing. Oh, well, no. Love on these kids. Love on these babies. Because you don't know you could be entertaining an angel. You don't know your, 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 your son, your daughter might be the very next Oprah, might be the next Tyler Perry, might be the next whoever. But we all have purpose in us. And sometimes it takes a mother and a mother's love to pull the purpose out of the child. I haven't always been perfect, but God is able to take the little things and make big things out of them, Pat. He's able to take somebody with a GED, Mother Hampton, I mean Mother Hunter, and put them in a position where they the boss over people with college degrees. That's the type of God I serve. It sounds crazy, but it can happen. He'll take your high school diploma having butt and get you a job and you got people with bachelors and, 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 and associates and doctor's degree and you they boss because of the favor that God has upon your life. I'm looking at my sister over here standing up. Sit on down. Your mama says sit down. <laughs> What's that you said? <laughs> but I thank God I ain't going to tell all your business, but I'm going to tell a little. I thank God that she don't look like what she been through. Because of the favor that God has on her life. Not now one of her kids that I know of anyway, and that's a good thing too. Ain't now one of them ever been in jail. I see you back there shouting, Zaquan. Ain't now one of them ever really been in no significant trouble. I mean trouble that kids get into. We, we, we do things. That I understand you, Big Red, if you get suspended for school every now and then. Because I know you get suspended sometime for acting up. <laughs> but things like that we can accept. When I was a child, I acted as a child. I didn't got suspended before. I didn't been in the principal's office before. We all have. You haven't? Y'all slide over, Miss Hunter. I don't want the lightning to hit you. <laughs> you ain't never been suspended from school. You ever skipped school? Yes, you have. I caught you one time in the basement on Rutland. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I had graduated already. I'm a year older than you. 
<laughs> but I'm serious, y'all. We as parents, this y'all day mothers, but we as parents in general, we have to continue to believe in our children, even in the midst of their mess and in the midst of their lack. We got to be there to pick up the pieces and put them back together. Come on, let us stand all over the building as we pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for this worship and word experience. We thank you for the word of God. We pray that it was encouraging to the mothers to know that when the wine runs out, all they have to do is just pour their water in and give it to you and allow you to transform it into what they need it to be. God, we thank you for this day. We ask special blessings upon every mother under the sound of my voice. Even those who aren't under the sound of my voice, wrap your loving arms around them and protect them. We'll give your name, honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. While we're yet standing on our feet, we extend an invitation at this time. There may be one in the midst of us who would like to be a part of the kingdom. God bless you. We hope you have enjoyed watching us today. We hope that we've been an inspiration to you and your family and friends. You may call us for prayer at area code 313 at 865-6156, telephone number. Praise the Lord. We are located, again, as I said, at 12375 Woodward Avenue. Our service is each Sunday morning at 1130. Praise the Lord. Bible study each Wednesday night at 630. We invite everyone to come out and be a part of all of our services right here. Remember, God loves you. Jesus loves you. And so do I. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy, D. Hattie, watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times. And you are watching Bell Global Network.